We're going to start with Dave Zirin. <laughs> Dave Zirin is the sports editor of The Nation. He has a podcast and blog called Edge of Sports. He is the author of 10 books and was nominated for an NAACP Image Award for his book, The John Carlos Story, The Sports Moment That Changed the World. Dave. I gotta put this on. Got you. Give it up for Vijay Prashad, everybody. My goodness. So I get to go first, the person you haven't heard of. Very exciting. Um, but, oh, thank you, Mom. Um, but before I start, there are three things I want to say, uh, just to clear the palate, if you will. Because hearing about everything that's been happening here, I'm ready to burst. Okay, one, there is nothing anti-Semitic about criticizing the actions of the Israeli state. And it is absurd that I even have to say that. Two, there is nothing anti-Semitic about this panel or the people on this panel, and it is damn slander to say otherwise. And in fact, the people up here have been on the front lines of fighting anti-Semitism, especially the most dire threat to me and my fellow Jews, the resurgent white nationalism of the Trump era. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, as a Jew, and you may hear me say that a lot in these remarks, but as a Jew, as someone whose family was stamped by the Holocaust, I will be damned if I'll be called anti-Semitic, especially by a coalition that includes Christian Zionists of the Mike Pence variety, people who love Israel but hate Jews and think me and my children are going to hell come the rapture. And we will not be silenced. The efforts to crush this event in the courts has failed, and honestly, Trying to silence a public event whose message is we will not be silenced <laughs> makes me wonder if these groups are allergic to irony. Now, so let's get started. I, I, I first of all, I have to say that my, my old, very frustrated piano teacher would be thrilled that I was doing a gig with Roger Waters. I just have to <laughs> say that. But I actually want to start by quoting the Palestinian poet Remy Kanazi, who said, to be Palestinian in the United States is to face erasure, it's to face marginalization, it's to face attacks and smears, and to be put on blacklists. And that's an important point because it means that those of us who aren't Palestinian have a moral duty to speak out even when it's difficult. Especially, especially for Jews like myself because the crimes against Palestinians are so often said to be done in our names. Now, it's not easy, as the events here in the last week show only too clearly. And as for me, there have been campaigns to take my job at the nation, and all because I write about Palestinian athletes and the toll that the occupation takes on their ability to do something as simple as play some sports. And I also criticize athletes who travel to Israel and pose holding guns with the IDF. And I think that's worthy of criticism. And for that, they want my job. But I also want to say that what I've had to endure is so minor compared to the people on this panel because they are slandered as anti-Semitic while I'm at least normally just dismissed as a self-hating Jew. Now, let's break down that phrase. I think the great uh, philosopher Larry David said it well, <laughs> where he said, hating myself, sure, but it has nothing to do with being Jewish. Um, <laughs> But seriously, how is it to hate oneself to oppose military occupation? How is it to hate oneself to stand with those who need solidarity for their survival? And do you know what actual self-hatred would look like? It would look like us becoming what we as a people once opposed, to mimic our oppressors from decades past. That is true self-hatred. You know what self-hatred looks like? Our self-hatred self would look like us rejecting our history of standing with the dispossessed 
in order to stand with a state built on stolen land. A country whose prime minister wants to name an illegal settlement after Donald Trump. In fact, if you want to talk about anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism is, is when people assume that just because you're Jewish, you must walk in lockstep with the state of Israel. What is anti-Semitic is then the assumption that all Jews support violence and colonization. What is anti-Semitic always is letting bigoted politicians like Donald Trump weaponize our faith and act like they speak for the Jewish people as if they give one damn about our community while they embolden the very forces of white nationalism shooting us in our places of worship. No, no more. No more, no more. My Judaism walks with Representative Ilhan Omar. My Judaism does not walk with Benjamin Netanyahu. My Judaism speaks to the best traditions of a 5,000 year history of radical resistance, a tradition that the Israeli state has long sought to destroy from the collective memory of our people. And that is a self-hatred I will never understand and never abide. But what I found is that the attacks against me and my dissenting Jewish sisters and brothers have gotten more right-wing, more rabid, more frankly unhinged. And it's for a very simple reason. They are enraged because a new generation of Jews are not willing to be silent when it comes to Israel. And that scares them. For years, liberal Jews have been in what we used to call the pep squad. Have you ever heard of the pep squad? It means progressive except for Palestine. Yet now, many more people are describing themselves as Jewish anti-Zionists, or jazz. <laughs> so they are leaving the pep squad and joining the jazz band. <laughs> My children are half Jewish, we call them jazz fusion. Um, now, we now have growing groups like if not now, Jewish Voice for Peace, the students who are protesting birthright. There's even a Jewish pro wrestler named, and I kid you not, David Starr, who talks on Twitter about ending the Israeli occupation. Now, look up David Starr. Now, fewer and fewer of us are willing to be silent, and that should scare those who depend on our privilege, our fear, and our, and our blind loyalty. So now we have this bizarre coalition of Christian Zionists, APAC, arms manufacturers, who are trying to intimidate us dissenters in the Jewish community. And it's important to recognize that what unites them, what unites these disparate forces, is that they see Palestinian life as less than human. Whether in Gaza and the West Bank or the refugee camps in Syria, they do not see Palestinians as worth living. That's what unites them. And as Israel chooses more and more to block with far-right actual anti-Semitic governments in Eastern Europe and Brazil, it becomes critical to integrate the fight for Palestine in the larger project of defeating the right, protecting the future of the planet, rebuilding the labor movement, and sustaining struggles against all forms of oppression. And I want to end with a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. for one reason, because it's always good to end with a quote <laughs> from Martin Luther King Jr. But I was teaching Dr. King in, in a sports history class and about his alliance with Muhammad Ali. I was teaching this uh, at Montgomery College in suburban DC. And I was reading his speech beyond Vietnam and I felt like it was talking directly to this young generation of Jews. Dr. King wrote, a time comes when silence is betrayal. Some of us who have already begun to break the silence of the night have found that the calling to speak is often a vocation of agony, but we must speak. We must speak with all the humility that is appropriate to our limited vision, but we must speak. Perhaps a new spirit is rising among us. If it is, let us trace its movement and pray that our inner being may be sensitive to its guidance. For we are deeply in need of a new way beyond the darkness that seems so close around us. Thank you very much. Perfect.